it. That's going to be theme number one for the Quarren Twang tune that I wrote. Hopefully you dug that. There's some cool little changes in there and the melody reflects it. And basically when I wrote the song, I wanted to do single note lines. It's paired up uh, with a fiddle uh, doing single note lines together and then separating doing um, harmony parts. Which the idea was is kind of like, you know, if uh, Django and uh, Stefan Grappelli did did kind of a more of a country bluegrass tune, what would they come up with? That was a little bit of the inspiration. I wanted to do uh, include some cool changes in it. And so uh, basically let's do a breakdown of what's going on, what notes I'm playing, uh, what where are the harmonies, and what, are, what am I doing over the changes. So it goes as follows. Uh, basically we're in the key of A. And it's at 118 BPM. And uh, the first single note line is going to be over the chords A and then a flat 7, G to D. So that's going to be the first little, I'll just break it up in these little fragments. So really it's just a single note line. Like I said, uh, bluegrass was definitely uh, an inspiration in this where you're going to have these kind of note choices. Um, there's just going to be a pull off. And then you're just outlining the flat seven chord just straight up and this is where the harmony part uh, happens uh, with fiddle. So we're only going to play the guitar part on this. Straight up playing this kind of stock G. Now that was over the D chord. So now we're going to move to the next part where the chords are going to be A and then to a flat three or C chord and then to an E chord. So the next part you're going to be up here and you're going to start on your ring finger on the ninth fret. Uh, all the uh, I'm going to have the tab included on this so you should be good. So that's a very much a bluegrass line. Uh, the one thing that you're, that you're going to be doing is so you're going to pull off on that. So the one thing is, is you kind of start in kind of a weird position. Uh, it took a second for even me to get it under my fingers, but I really wanted to kind of uh, do something that's a little bit, you know, uh, out of what maybe I, uh, a line that I normally wouldn't do. And as this is the theme, uh, it's going to, I wanted to make it consistent and have, be very specific on note choices. So it's got that C natural and the C sharpie, which is what you're going to hear a lot in country and bluegrass. Slide down. Now this is the part where actually you can play both the fiddle and the guitar part. The idea is single note line, double note line. Single note line, double note line as far as uh, playing over the measures. I have it as this, you can do it as a double stop. So slide down. Just a half step. And that first finger is going to grab both those and then you're outlining the E chord on the next one that you outline the C chord on. Now E chord. That's a little bit different because you're going to be, you're thinking this box uh, right here, that kind of shape if you're familiar with, with, which we just did over the G mind you. Now the one thing with that is you want to slide up so you're going from index middle all the way up to the ninth. It, it creates kind of a cool little thing. Now here's where it gets a little bit complicated because the chords are one, one with a three in the bass, and these are split bars, four, sharp four diminished, and then you do a walk down which includes one, flat seven, six, flat six, five, one. So this next line you're going to start with your pinky on, on the B string uh, at the 10th fret. So the way that I like to break things down uh, is that basically um, what I'm doing in this is really outlining each chord as as they pass and including a couple other um, note selections that I that I wanted to do. It's a it's a lick that you're going to hear a lot in bluegrass and country. All chromatic. There's that flat three uh, three again, or C and C sharp. Now that, there it is again. Now we're at the four chord and we're outlining it. 
and I pull off on that just because it's a rather quick line. That's a cool line that I like. Uh, you kind of throw in a little bit of swing and uh, we're playing over the sharp four diminished or D sharp diminished there. So you get this. Really a stock line that you'd play over a sharp four diminished, but when you play it that quickly. So you're gonna have that kind of rate that rake over that part. Okay, now here's a cool chromatic line that I wanted to end it with, and this is where that line is all single note lines with the guitar and the fiddle. The next portion here is, a, a, I love doing this, um, is playing a chromatic line uh, stretching up. That last part is a pull off. And that index is going to grab, so you get C sharp, C, back to C sharp. So the second portion of that also, the idea is to just do these kind of ascending chromatic lines. I love doing that, and at, it's you're going up as the chords are going down, which I find interesting and I like that. So. Now the last part, now when you're playing single note lines with uh, fiddle or steel or anything like that, you really don't want to bend a lot because that's making it that much more difficult for them to play with. So I wanted to kind of sit on a note and I chose this note as opposed to the C as opposed to the C sharp. So the last portion, pull off 875 on the B string. So the, the whole point with this uh, song is that you do kind of a single note line, then a double note line, and then you do this extended um, over the last four bars uh, single note line, which is relatively fast. Take them in small chunks. Uh, for the uh, True Fire people, you'll be in your asset folder. I'm also including this on YouTube. I'll have the page at the last portion uh, after the lesson, so you can screenshot it or whatever you need to do. I hope you enjoyed that lesson, and that's just theme one, which is the, the lines uh, that I have for both guitar and fiddle on my tune, Corn Twain. And hopefully you did, dug it, and there's a lot of cool stuff in there as far as what you're doing over the chord changes because the chords are just a little bit different. They're not so diatonic and that's what I wanted to do in this. So I hope you dug that and uh, for the True Fire people, people we'll be moving along to what I'm doing on the fill section and it, this will be a separate video and for the YouTubers I may wind up putting it up there as well. I hope you dug that and make sure to check out the tune Corn Twain because this is um, all the parts that are going to be in it and what I wrote and played on guitar. Thanks for uh, checking this out, and we'll see you later.